Well, how do that, chums? As I, Captain Steve, and today, chums, I've just installed update 3.66. So we're going to head on in. We're going to take a look at my settlements and see what changes it has made to my settlement. And then I'm also going to jump around different bases inside of my verse, inside normal mode, and uh, yeah, make decisions where I'm going to delete those bases and build back better. Yeah, so here we go. Let's just hit up the live. Let's see if that's all working okay. Yep, there we are. We're all good. We're all dialed in and ready to go. So, yep. Oh, hello there. Okay. Nice one. First in the house. 07. Okay. And we've got a sleep assassin and Dutch 66. Welcome, Dutch 66. And hello there. A sleep assassin. Yep. Right. I don't know whether that's the same thing as a sleeper assassin. Um, yeah, odd one. Right. Something I have already spotted inside of this when I dialed in earlier is I saw a Viking in my base. I told him to get out. He wasn't having none of it. And there's just loads of callbacks running around at the moment. But I did see a Viking. I wasn't seeing things. I've got it as a video clip. I will make a video of it soon. And that will be coming out fairly soon. Yeah, lots of callbacks. Mainly callbacks. Hello there, callbacks. Chums? You're just coming out of the pub, are you? Nice. Well, it already seems a little bit more lifelike here, doesn't it? I'm seeing a lot more busy activity going on outside of all these houses. Pretty darn awesome. Look, there's the Viking. There he is. What are you doing here? You, 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 Viking, you. At least he's got the demon horns. I love the demon horns. They're freaking ace. Yeah, you know what? You can stay. You're bigger than me. Right, okay. So, what was that to change? Yes, there has been some changes here, chums. Where's my actual... Where's my base? Basey, basey, basey. Where's my overseer office? There it is over there. I get lost. Yeah, I can navigate freaking cyberpunk. Can I navigate this? No. I suppose I suppose there's more sort of landmarks in cyberpunk, isn't there? But yeah, look, we've got ourselves a teleporter now, chums. We can just go wherever we want, which is pretty darn swish, isn't it? That's freaking swish. That's awesome. So that's a welcome change. Double thumbs up. So we can use this. Actually, I'll probably use a Nexus still, because you get the return to Nexus. You don't get return to settlement on your quick menu, which maybe they're missing a trick there. I don't know. Let's head on over to here. Let's hit this up. No pending decisions. I think my settlement is as big as it can get now. I think I'm I think I'm done. I don't think I'm gonna get anything else, but we shall see. We shall see while we're playing through if anything does pop up. Because it should alert me back here. So I've got two markets. Let's see, where are my markets? So here's my markets over here. The markets have also been upgraded, chums. Check this out. I am I have got a video pending to go out and up. But yeah, inside the market, you've got a galactic trade terminal now. Lovely. Look at all this stuff I can buy. Lovely jobs. Nice. I like that I can get paraffinium there. Sometimes comes in handy, doesn't it? Oh, hello there, Dr. Pong. Switched accounts for extra like. Well, thanking you, Dr. Pong. Yep, cool, yeah. Sweet. And then over here, look at this. We've got a trade agent. Now, I tried interacting with these trade ag agents earlier, the menu didn't pop up, and I got stuck, and the only way to exit was to completely shut my game down. Let's hope that doesn't happen. That it's working. There we go. So I have got stuck in this menu before, which isn't great. Okay, so purchase components. Don't mind if I do. And there's some nice things for sale in here. All of these sort of stuff is in here. But I've also got drop pod data in this one. Glass in this one as well, and navigation data. Nice, nice, awesome. And then we go over here. Oh, what's that? You can build galactic trade terminals like this one now too, with a big base to it. Yeah, sweet. I, I have actually rebuilt my glass farm. You know the one I deleted last time when I was doing a video like this, where I was deleting bases? I've rebuilt that glass farm. I've got a video coming out soon, so you guys can see it. Now this Galactic Trade Terminal has got exactly the same stuff in it as the previous Galactic Trade Terminal. But the little market dude over here sells different stuff. This is one I got stuck in earlier. Here we go. Brilliant. Yes. Yes, I would like to purchase your components. And when you scroll down on this one, he does salvage data and dehydrogen jelly and more drop pod coordinates. So great for new players to come and visit these places now. Now settlements are starting to make more sense. This is this is cool. What would be nice is if there was some sort of, you know, like Kronos, who buys a load of your, your cooked goods. Inside of your bar area, if you've got one, it'd be nice if you could actually sell them in bulk 
to you know your bar guy maybe he doesn't give as much as Kronos but at least you can sell him in bulk that would make a lot of sense that would make a lot of people happy heck yes it would and maybe you can buy some cooking components there that are quite hard to come by maybe I don't know I'm on a, a planet full of freaking honey maybe he sells lots of honey goods and John McNone has just given five US and dollars for thanking you my friend that is much appreciated 07 John McNone so here we go let's see if I can do that uh, 07 oh no it's not typing people oh no okay uh, 07 at at John sweet that should put in a little command that says that you've done something freaking awesome hopefully it does I'm wearing a No Man's Sky vest top that I got off eBay it's not official merch it actually says on it at the bottom the sky belongs to no man <laughs> I guess that's how they got around it, you know what I mean? It's pretty funny. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if Hello Games expand the settlements in future with new features, etc. Yes, that would be cool. And it would be nice if some of these guys, you know, they're, they're not all that happy. When you hit up this centre console over here, it tells you what your city status is when it comes to happiness. It'd be nice if they gave you little missions so you could actually get that all the way up to the 100%. And it's the same with productivity. It's, they might need a part or something. Maybe you go get that part for them. You know, like maybe they want a stasis device or something. And that would encourage people to get the blueprints for stasis devices and then come back here. And maybe if you give them that blueprint for stasis devices after you've learnt it, maybe then your, your city starts becoming more productive. So they could tie it into some of the mechanics that are already there in a clever roundabout way. And maybe it might get people interested in grabbing some of those higher blueprints, like for fusion igniters or something. Yeah, there's ways and means, isn't there? So, yeah, really interesting. Settlement Wars would be a great feature. Yes, actually. Um, looking over into the horizon, there is another settlement. Is that my, that's my one. There's another settlement near here that somebody else has half-inched. There was earlier. There it is over there. Lancaster. Wouldn't it be cool to actually set up some sort of settlement war if they're on the same planet as you? I like that idea. That's a sneaky idea. So hello there, Andrew McKay. A lot of 07s in there. Warfy's in the house. Hello there, Warfy. So sweet. John McNone. Settlements is the first step to mega cities. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. What I do like is how the procedural generation of these buildings is actually taking place and putting all these things together. They do look proper cool, don't they? It does look it does look quite cool how how it's actually worked out. So again, it's something new that they've added into the procedural engine. So what I would say about No Man's Sky, although it's Hello Games' little baby, so is their engine that they've actually built this on. It's something that they've built from the ground up. I know it's got elements of havoc in there and other bits and bobs that they rely on, but the main engine is theirs. So if it can do all this procedural generation now, and Hello Games want to set out to do a more ambitious project in the future, they've already got it all nailed, all this procedural stuff. You know, they can have procedural dungeons. They've already done, like, um, derelicts in space. They can apply that to land structures as well, you know? So, yeah, maybe we'd have places to raid someday, you know, like pirate facilities. There's so much they could do, and there's so much potential. In an infinite universe, there's infinite potential. So they've hit a gold mine with No Man's Sky. I just don't get why there isn't loads of other game developers doing this. You know what I mean? It's freaking mental. If a team of, like, what, 20 of them can pull this off. Imagine if a AAA game company said, you know what, No Man's Sky's doing quite good. Let's rip that idea and let's make something similar. And let's go crazy town with freaking procedural engines. Why hasn't that happened? I just, I don't know. It's unbelievable to me. It's, um... Maybe it's a little bit too hard for these AAA game studios. Maybe they like copying and pasting previous games that have got this, exactly the same play styles. Who knows? Maybe they're just after e easy money. I don't know. I mean, it's just freaking beyond me why we aren't seeing No Man's Sky clones left, right and centre, considering how popular a game it is and how awesome an idea it is. It's, it's just beyond me. You know, how many Call of Duty clones have we got? How many Walking Dead type clones have we got? Zombie hunters and stuff have we got? You know? I wouldn't mind a few more No Man's Sky clones. The closest we've got is Elite, but that's very sort of simulator-ish. This is more sort of arcadey, more relaxing. I'm on about something a little bit more No Man's Sky, but with crazier creatures and alien life forms, that'd be freaking ace. Or they could just add that into here, which hopefully they will one day. It'd be great to see what they could do with the engine without the constraints of last gen. Exactly that, Dutch, was kind of what I'm thinking. I'm wondering whether they're supporting No Man's Sky. Well, they've already said that they've split the team two ways. 
They got half the team working on the new ambitious project and half the team working on No Man's Sky. But I also think a lot of what they have done for No Man's Sky when it comes to cross-play and cross-gen, you know, with it, maybe they're still looking at utilising all those platforms because they've got such a big market space. I don't know, but part of me is with you. I'm, I'm thinking it'd be nice to see what the next gen can really do with procedural generation. Okay, your bases. We're going to use the Nexus because I can use Return to Nexus and we can get through quite a few of these. But I will be doing a video on, um, well, I've already done the video on my, uh, my, my frost farm or my glass farm. Members can see it already. So there's Glass Factory there. I've redone that one. Dream House, I'm not going to touch that one. We, we've already looked at that one. Diplo Base. Let's go to the Diplo Base. Now, if it's the Diplo Base I'm thinking of, that looks like a Diplo, but it's on a Triceratops planet now, because Origins took away the Diplos, it doesn't really make sense having a Diplo Base when it's a planet without Diplos. So I think I need to go on a hunt for a new Diplo planet and then rebuild the Diplo Base upon that planet so I'm thinking maybe get rid of this one if it is the one I'm thinking of I'm stuck in last gen due to no PS5s available John McNone I've heard that Sony has now sourced more parts to make the Sony PlayStation 5 odd thing is apparently these parts aren't as cool as the parts that are already in the PlayStation 5 yet they're going to be putting up the price because it's actually harder to get hold of these parts and they're having to import them and do all sorts of gnarly stuff so you might be paying a little bit more for a PlayStation that might not be as awesome as the PlayStation that I have sitting on a shelf but there we go that's that so yeah this Diplo I do like this base I can make it better and to be fair there's no Diplos on this planet anymore they're all Triceratopsian so there's no real point in having this base here, although I do like it. I mean, yeah, look, I put it here because of Diplos. The Diplos turned into these things, and the heads aren't in proportion. And would you look at that? They're acting like they didn't get scanned. They did get scanned. Freaking Discovery Server. So you know what? I'm going to delete this one, and I'm going to find a new Diplo planet inside of the NMSA hub, and hopefully remake this base there. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this then. So delete them on base. Chicka boom, you're gone, Diplo base. On the Diplo world that doesn't have Diplos. Done. Message retracted. Oh, okay, Pong. Cool. Let's hope so, Steve. It's not long it's long overdue. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. Oh, hello there, Scottish of the Rod variety. Hello there, Rod. So yeah, I've got um channel links for Dr. Pong. Um D R D Pong, I think it is. I'm not sure. I created one and um I think, no, Wolfie created one. D DRP, maybe. But I know rods. I don't really... There we go. Oh, no. Uh, da, da. Rod. There we go. There we go. Oh, Wolfie's there anyway. Wolfie's awesome with these links. I should just let him do it, shouldn't I? There we go, Wolfie. Nice one. Thank you. Right, so let's, um, yeah, let's head on back to the Nexus. Take me back to the Nexus. Done. Lavish says, hello, Captain. Well, hello there, Lavish. And we've got Big Noxy in the house. I'm having problems with certain base parts not snapping together when they used to. That sucks. Yeah, there are a couple of base parts that are a bit weird. The carpets that go on walls are a bit weird because they don't go on the walls. Yeah, there's a few other bits and bobs. I found that the small doors as well, if you use the small doors rather than the double door, it do you can't actually go through the hole. The door opens, nothing actually happens. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you the next base I do. I'll put down one of the, the doors and I'll show you what I mean. Because it's hard to explain. So here we go. Let's uh, go over here. And let's pick up another one of my bassas. And we're going to go for... So, Dream Home, we're done. Uh, 3K Subs Droid Yard. Okay. Not really the most special of bases, and I can build better droids, but it was a thank you 3k thing. So there's still a video out there in the verse for when I hit my 3k. Be interesting to know, I, I didn't see the data when I bit, I skipped quickly past it. I wonder how long ago that was. I'm DRP, DERP, nice, BRB, pizza's ready, be right back. Okay, well enjoy your pizza, nibble nibble. I'm going to be making jacket potato, cheese and beans I think tonight, yummy. Yeah, I haven't had jacket potatoes in such a long time. I like to wait until they're like half cooked and then get them out of the oven and put a load of um, oil on them, like um, you know, vegetable oil, and then sprinkle loads of salt on the skin and pepper and maybe some other herbs on the skin. So when you put them back in, it really crisps up the skin. And yeah, you can eat the skin as well as the potato. Lovely. Very yummy. Okay, cool. So I'll be doing that later. 
Right, oh, so this base. Let's head on out. So yeah, I've built some droids up here. I think the doors stopped working a little while ago. I don't think it matters now if you hit this switch. I don't think they close. Oh, they do. There you go. The music's playing inside. Let's just open the door again. And let's close it from the inside. Okay, so it is working now. Did you see those little guys just run past the window? They're pretty cool. Okay, so we've got these droids here. Nice. But yeah, I can make much better droids than this now. We've got this little guy over here. I like him. He's quite cool, isn't he? But yeah, a few little droids. Loads of droid parts there as well. I'm going to go see what that little fauna was. Those little ball-shaped dudes. Oh my days, look at him. Isn't he quite something? Hello, little guy. Oh, he's all fluffy as well. What the fudge? That's so cute. Isn't that cute? Okay, well, if you do want to come here for that fauna, there is the actual coordinates in the bottom left-hand corner. So, yeah, he's an awesome little cutie, him. right -o. Well, let's, um, let's delete this. Then. Cool. I've got all my fauna, so I, I won't be grabbing one of those. And delete base. Boom. Memories. Oh, no, I was going to put down one of them walls. And sh Damn it. I just deleted the base. I won't be able to do it now. I'll have to do it in the next one. Damn it. Fudge and blast. Okay, we'll do that in the next one. Don't worry, I will I will try to remember <laughs> before I go and delete the base. Oh look, my mech's still there. What the fudge? Okay, back to the Nexus. And we'll go to the next one. Very fluffy indeed. Oh, we've got Moose Gaming in the house. Hello there, Moose. And Wolfie has already dropped the link to Wolfie's channel. I oh, know one of Wolfie's channel. Moose's channel. Moose Gaming does quite a lot of stuff when it comes to um, sort of story mode type games, but he also covers No Man's Sky. Great go guy is Moose. Check him out if you haven't already. Awesome, awesome. Well, yeah, look, yeah, <laughs> looks like good drumsticks on that one. Yes, yummy. Hairy drumsticks. Hackle Sleep Hexagon. Well, hello. Hi. Strangely like on you got there. Some little groovy green alien. Well, blue alien on the green background. Pretty good, Sam. Right, so let's hit this up. And let's uh, go to the next base. And this time I will do the walls. Your base is... Dream da, da, da. House. Ah, Nanite Pulse Fishing Resort. So any of those pulse fishing, they're still pretty good locations. But all the... Let's go there anyway. Let's go to the base. I want to see how good the base is because I might rebuild this base. Not on stream, but I will do a video offline and then show you before and after. And that's exactly what I've done with the um, the frost farm. So hopefully that video I'll be putting live later this week. I've got two lore videos to go live. The Corvax, the Viking, and I've also got that frost farm. If you're a member, you'd already have early access and you've probably already seen it. I still think there is a part two to this update. You know what, Big Noxy? I think so as well. I mean, it's weird how we only got Rendezvous 1 and 2 and no encrypted missions. It almost feels like it's half the expedition and then maybe we might get another half to it. I'm keeping hold of my expedition save just in case there's some sort of continuation type thing. But, you know, who knows? It'll probably just go into another expedition. What the heck? Half my base has disappeared into a wall? Okay, well, let us um, let me show you this wall thing that I found earlier. So let's go into here. And it was in the metal walls. And it was... I mean, we've just had an update. So maybe it's fixed it. But there was this door here. So let's just put a door there. Boom. And I couldn't walk through it earlier. It opened. Ah! I can go through! Okay, it looks like they've fixed it, people. So before, there was like an invisible barrier there. I couldn't do nothing. Uh, let's, is that the only small door? Is there another one? No, that was it. That was the door that had problems earlier. And also this power door. It also had problems too. So same thing. When it opened, I couldn't walk through. Ah, and I can now. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, I can go through the open door. Nice one. Okay, that wasn't working before. Sweet. Well, I can... Yeah, so this is my pulse fishing base, isn't it? This is the one that I want to rebuild. And it looks like it's fudged up a bit because maybe part of it is still in the mountain okay well let's go back into the build mode now it's odd that you have to select an item before you can actually hit edit but there we go let's delete those i'll leave it as it is we'll head back to the nexus because look at this planet look how cool this planet is as well i do want to have a base here but i want to make something more interesting than what i already have here right now so i'm going to do that offline that's going to be one of my next base build projects i don't know what i'm going to build here and I'll work something out. So there we go. Let's uh, head on back to the Nexus. Boom. 
Okay. I like your new bell bubble jetpack effect. Yes, that was from Expedition Free as a reward. Yeah, pretty darn cool. I, I like it. It's nice. Pretty awesome. XX Lobos. My base computers have disappeared on two of my bases, leaving just markers. I can't delete or change them. What? That's weird. That's very weird. Um, that's that's odd. Um, now on the quick menu. Oh, let's do a save quickly now that I've deleted a few of them bases. Because before I've deleted bases, not saved, gone back in to the game, and those bases reappear. So I don't know where they sit in the game file cache. So what I'm worried is if I'm deleting too many bases and it is putting them into cache, maybe it might crash my game if I go and fill it up with too much stuff in the back end save, you know? Yeah, the station reminds me of the portals. They had no use for a while. Yeah, Big Noxy, it is a little bit odd, isn't it? Especially since in Expedition 3 they've actually rewarded us with a station override. It's like a massive great big tease, isn't it? You know, Why do that if there's not going to be something directly after this update? But then Hello Games have done weirder stuff than that in the past. You know, they chucked the freaking Normandy at us. I mean, we didn't see that one coming, did we? Who knows? It's really hard to second guess Hello Games, isn't it? So there we go. NMSA Predator Storm Crystals. Well, it's like me, with all this speculation I've been saying about the Void for freaking God knows how long. I've been banging on about the Void since last summer, since we got the uh, summer law done. I mean, they hired Greg Buchanan, cost them money, to make that law and put it into game. And I would have thought from that they would have built on it and actually brought in the Void. I really honestly thought this year's big update, it's got to be linked to that. You know, the whole... Summer Law, I mean, Ariadne's still sitting up there, bold as brass, inside of our freaking Nexus right now, and we know she's an imposter. And it's just been left like that. And they can't do that. It's like lost all over again, but shitter. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm hoping they capitalise on that and bring that in. But uh, we will see, we will see. Nothing on the station override as yet. No, no, not as yet, Dr. Fong. Sadly not. Right, OK, so this one here... Uh, I th don't know why I built such a crap base. That's terrible, isn't it? All right, well, that's going to go. What is this one called? Predator's Storm Crystals. Oh, this was just a predatory world that's got um, horrible creatures on and storm crystals. Nope, I can find myself something different to this that I, I like more. That can go. Delete. Goodbye. Done. Nothing, no. Hey, oh, I just got another 400 megabyte update. Yes, that's mainly a round of bug fixes and patches, and also some quality of life improvements to settlements. I covered off the life improvements at the very start of this video. So just a quick recap on those life improvements while we're teleporting back. Settlements, your overseer building, now has a teleporter in it, so you can go wherever you want and get back to your settlement nice and easy, and then jump back to where you were. Makes a lot of sense. Your marketplaces that you build have gained a granted trade terminal and also salespeople that actually sell stuff inside of your marketplace. Brilliant. I just... Those are the sort of things that if a playtester sat down with the actual settlements update for like an hour or something, would have said, you know what would really jazz these things up? Purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, they, they were the things that I was suggesting when I was walking around the settlements when I was first playing it, saying, you know what, be, this would be good and this would be good. When I've done my review video, if you watch back my review video of settlements where I gave it like a 6.2 or something, I was pretty pretty harsh with my score. They were some of the things that I suggested that got added, and lo and behold, they're now there. So, brilliant. Which I think is awesome that Hello Games listens to the community and uh, takes those ideas. I mean, I wasn't the only one. I retweeted a lot of people's ideas where they were saying pretty much the same thing, but just in different context. And uh, yeah, I retweeted those out and I made sure I tagged Hello Games in them as well. And I'm hoping a lot of that came from that. Who knows? But yeah, or maybe it was something that I was hoping to add, but just wanted to add it after. That doesn't really make sense. Okay, let's go down. Let's have a look, see. Let's see if there's anything else. Dream Home, Pulse Fishing Resort. That's one I want to redo. Abandoned Watcher. That's my spider that's above one of the failed boundaries. And I'm keeping that. I'm keeping that. Yes. Yeah, we don't need to go see that one. Captain Steve R2-D2. Now, I've made a lot of R2-D2s. If this is my rusted one or in um, the NMSA hub, I could get rid of it because... 
I've already got a couple of bases inside of that area and it's getting quite congested, which means that maybe another player could build a base there. So yeah, I could get rid of the, this R2-D2. Let's have a look which one it is. I've built a few of the dang things, to be fair. Sergamon, sweet settlements make sense now. Heck yes, they, they, they're, they're making a lot more sense every update. And that's what I like about No Man's Sky. It's always evolving. Okay, so today I got patches for No Man's Sky and also Cyberpunk. And when you compare the patch list of No Man's Sky against Cyberpunk, and then you look at how much time has gone on Cyberpunk and No Man's Sky. A small team of 20 is blowing them out the water at CD Projekt Red. CD Projekt Red, your patch list is like that. Yeah, that big. Hello Games is, is like four times the size. And uh, you've got four times as many people. The math doesn't work. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. So, yeah, what I'm saying is... I was expecting DLC from Cyberpunk and also what they promised was a free upgrade for any PlayStation 5 or next-gen console owners which just hasn't happened it hasn't happened you know I pre-ordered the game based on the fact that I was getting my PS5 and they actually said that there would be a next-gen version it hasn't arrived so what I paid for I haven't got basically and uh, yeah it's a bit annoying to be fair oh look at that what the fudge has happened to that it's gone all Technicolored what the fudge why is it all purple? That is freaking awesome. No way. That's got all freaking shiny. Let's put the sun in the sky. Oh, no. No, go back to how you was. Okay, uh, maybe it's raining or something, but that looked freaking epic, didn't it? But yeah, that's uh, my old R2-D2. You can see there that it's... You see the doorway, it isn't, it isn't onto its face properly anymore. So there's bits that have sort of gone a bit fudged up. It'd be nice to see if I can make an R2-D2 out of some of the new parts, wouldn't it? But yeah, I've got a few R2-D2 bases, and this planet doesn't look overly special. And the stuff that I've got inside of my R2-D2, again, doesn't look overly special. But I do like this chromatic look. It's got all shiny again, look. Look at that, you can even see reflections in it. That's freaking ace. I love that. Yeah, you can just delete the door, like you're saying there. So if I go into, I don't know, into here... Let's pick up the old door, 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 there we are. Let's go into there. Let's go edit. And then all I need to do is remove the door and then go out of edit mode. Oh, whoops, I pressed the wrong button. And put the door back in on its face. The only thing is, look, it's lost the snap point. It won't let you snap the door back onto the biodome in the right bloody place. No, it's going all over the freaking shop. It let me stick it on the sides, but it let me stick it on the front. No, it freaking won't. Okay. And put it on the back for much sake it, 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 it wants to go everywhere that I don't want it to go why why I want it there I want it in front I want it yes I want it there it's not going there so it's being awkward people and maybe it's because of this let's get rid of that let's go back into the menu let's try that once more if it doesn't go on there I'll just delete the dang thing and uh, yeah we can start again yep yeah, it's not going there it's not snapping on properly so we can delete this one I'm not fast. That R2-D2 base takes me about 20 minutes to do that. So, yeah, goodbye R2-D2. Cherry bar, you're gone. That snap point is is still missing. Hmm, arse. That sucks, doesn't it? Try it from the opposite side. Yeah, it will go on up. No, it, it, it it's broken snap point, like uh, Roth was saying. It's still a little bit squiffed. Yeah, it's a bit of a strange one. Okay, let's uh, jump back to the old Nexus. I've got another one. I've got another R2-D2 on a rusted planet, and I've probably got another one somewhere else. I like making R2-D2s. They look good, and um, they're quite they're quite practical as well. You can get quite a lot in them. So, yeah, nice. So shiny, yeah. The light is in the way. Yeah, that's what I thought. I deleted it, but it still wouldn't go in. We well, saw what I tried to do. It's a bit, a bit shite, isn't it? But it is what it is. I can build back better, though. I can build more of these bases. It's not a problem. Don't overly worry. Um, yeah. Basically, if this is the yearly update, okay, take it that this is the yearly update. Now, Hello Games have said that they will bring updates every six to eight weeks or so, but that's not true from Origins to now, or technically, we've, you know, from Origins to Frontiers, so it was a massive dry spell. Um, so we might only have bases to do for some time. So let's see. I kind of feel that there might be a Halloween update on the cards, but that's gut feeling. That's just linking stuff together and 
hoping, basically. Bandom Watcher, unit fishing. Okay, I'll leave that one there. Only pulse fishing ones I'm going to leave and probably just make them better. NMSA PvP Arena. Hmm. I might remake that. We're going to have a quick look at it. We'll have a look and have a look at what planet it's on and whereabouts it is. This is actually in the NMSA hub. So I have got a Kota Arena in the Cobra hub. This one is in my own hub. And I think this is one where me, Damash, Madfish and my Ammo 10 made our own little areas and made our own little mini PvP arenas and they're all sort of stapled together into like this little arena. However, I've spotted something a bit sneaky, Mr. Scottish of the Rods. If you're at your actual settlement, you can still get out your multi-tool and shoot. That would be very good for a country western style mini-game. Hmm. We may have to do some sort of PvP shenanigans inside of my settlement, considering it looks like the Wild West. Like an ar like a Red Dead Redemption type freaking arc inside of freaking No Man's Sky. Heck yes. Yeah, this is the one. This is the one that me, Madfish, and um, Dimash, and all that lot made. It's a bit of a weird one, because some areas have got better covers than others. And the lighting on this planet is a bit miserable now as well. And there's bits that don't look right there anymore. It looks a bit squiffy. So you know what, I might get rid of it, and I might have to remake something like this at some stage. This can go, I think. Yeah, that's going to go. Dilly D, and let's get rid of this then. Pow, and delete mondo. Delete base! Goodbye, NMSA Arena. We will make another one at some stage. Heck yes. I guess the void is an empty promise. <laughs> yeah, it's void of all substance. Who knows? It's a bit of an odd one. There was so much tease for something, like the void or the abyss. I still think that they're all same, the one and the same thing. I mean, Artemis went mission there. He went through a portal and somehow got stuck in between realms in the portal area. I actually had a guy at my settlement the other day saying that they just came from the void and they exited from a black hole to get back into space. They wanted to warn my settlement, basically. Uh, I put the screenshot of it on um, Twitter. I'd add it into a, a, an upcoming video or something and say, take a look at this because it's freaking weirdness. Oh, what am I doing? That's OK. I can just call the Nexus in. We don't need to teleport back. There we go. Let's go back in there. So it makes me wonder, doesn't it? I've got a cowboy at you but I've got a top rate gun okay might need rules or you'll win every time yeah I have got quite an OP cannon I have to say yes I think it would maybe a quick draw is what I'm thinking Scottish Rod the first to do the other player first blood so the first person to make a shot so we start opposite ends of the settlement and we have to sort of cross over to where each other started or something so there's two ways to win. You either shoot the opposite person, or you get back into their camp without getting shot. Something like that, I don't know. We could do something like that, or just first blood. So it's almost, uh, first person to get shot is, is game over, basically. Yeah, you just have to be honest with it. You know, you're know, you going to be streaming, I'm going to be streaming, so people are going to say, hold on, you just got shot, Rod, or uh, hold on, Captain Steve, you just got shot. You know, that sort of thing. So yeah, it sh could work. First blood. In fact, that's what we could call it. It's Red Dead First Blood, or something, I don't know. Right, your basis. Let's go and have a look. See, we'll have to give that a go. We give it a go instead of interceptor or next week or something maybe. No night pulse fishing. What's this one under here? Euclid Centre, England. Oh, this is this is another R two D two base, and this one's bloody beautiful. I'll show you this one because yeah, I don't think you'd be too bothered that I deleted that art last one after you see this one. Well, hopefully, this one is, sh is shiny as just like the last one. The last one was super shiny. Let's hope this one's shiny as well. Oh, hello there, Banana Tom. Banana Tom in the house, people. Banana Tom is another content creator. Complete loony. Um, yeah, check him out. He's pretty damn freaking awesome. Scottish Rod drew a picture of a lady coming, getting peeled out of a banana. Tom's having it done as a tattoo soon. <laughs> freaking crazy man. But yeah. Awesome. Right, it is a very good tattoo design. I actually really like it, to be fair. I just hope that the tattooist that you go to, Tom, can get the actual... the, the Patination. Right. Okay. Now, although that I said this one's freaking beautiful. Let's, oh, look. I think it's I think its face is right. There we go. And it is super shiny. Super shiny. R2D2 base. Heck yes. Awesome. I like it. And yep, it's actually got the end. It's got the actual face in the right place. There we go. 
so we don't have to be too gutted. This one's got lightning storms, look at that. Now this planet is just one jump from the Euclid Galactic Center and it's beautiful. The planet is like England. It's got a bit of stormy weather, but it's nice. Let's just make sure I can traverse this full base. I don't usually put anything on the other two floors because it's hard to get off the ladders. Yeah, it's a simple one, but it's, it's got everything I need there. That's cool. Lovely jubbly. It was just a marker for the center of Euclid. If you want the portal coordinates for here, there they are in the bottom corner. Come build a base here. It's an awesome area if you're looking to jump any of your other saves to the galactic core. So what you can do is use the Nexus to fast travel, say, your permadeath here, and then do one jump into the galactic center. Boom, and you've got yourself that awesome great trophy that is really hard to come by, that nobody, well, a lot of people haven't got. There you go, that's how you can platinum the game in a very short space of time. Sweet and lovely. New building opportunities. Did you see that? New building opportunities are available at my settlement, people. We're just going to go back to my settlement. I'll show you the thing with the multi-tools while I'm there that you can actually shoot them. Okay, well, I thought my settlement was now at maximum size. I'm wrong. Ha <laughs> ha! I like being wrong when it's about something good. Hello there, Bobby JW. Welcome! DJ Nip Nip, the Bite Beat Master. Can you make a crypto challenge build? A... a Zipto challenge build. I don't know what a CTPO. Oh, C3PO. A C3PO challenge build. Perhaps. A C3PO. He's, he's the big golden guy that goes around with R2D2, isn't he? Hmm. I don't know. I think, um, I think the people that are very good at glitch building will just walk away with that one. Yeah. Because there's only so much you can do in non-glitch. But then again, the build methods now, it kind of does sort of open the doorway to everybody to have a chance, doesn't it? Maybe. I'm thinking of doing a Halloween base-off challenge against um, Professor Cynical. But then open the doors to everybody to actually join in and build some sort of Halloween base. So I need to find a planet and need to actually hit up the details. I mean, it's a month away. I've got a little bit of time. So keep tuned to the channel if that sounds interesting to you. I will be doing a Halloween base off at some stage. View construction -y opportunities. Generator room or deny construction? It's an easy choice. I'm going to go for the generator room every time. Yeah, awesome. There we go. Brilliant. Where is this actually taking place? Where is the build happening? There's that Viking again. There's a Gek! There's a freaking Gek in my town! Oi, you Gek the heck out! What are you doing here? Snail eyes as well. Freaking, oh my days. There's, there's the heart, there's the, you know, the, the first spawn. Then there's the low spawn. Then there's the one with the snail eyes. Not even on the spawn register in my book. Yeah, snail eyed little git. Right, okay, leave. Yeah, literally, go on, off. Yeah, yeah, do one. Over there, that's where you should be. Right over that hill. Keep going, there's a trading post. You'll find it. Yep, goodbye. Little gek, go. Yes, be off. <laughs> Good. Oh, there's two freaking Vikings. This update has put weird populace inside of my sieve. That's a bit strange. There are Korvaks and Gek living peacefully together in my settlements. It's a strange thing. It really is, isn't it? Sassable. There you go, look. You can get out your mining tool and you can just shoot whatever you like in here. Where's my bolt caster? There we go. Boom, boom die you can't shoot your residents though it sort of puts it away when you target them look you can't shoot him dance dance mf dance yeah no you can't do that but yeah i was thinking rod so we could actually do a little game of hide and seek inside these settlements and try and shoot each other the first one to get first blood wins that sort of shenanigans could be quite cool could be quite fun excellente Right, where's the build opportunity? Where am I supposed to be building? Over this way. Now what I've noticed is it gives you the marker the very first time you go to it and start building. Then after that, the marker disappears and I get lost in my town all the time, but I can get lost going to the fridge in my own house. So, you know, it's it's one of those things. Mine has just gone uh, back to S after a build. Nice. Mine's at an S right now, but I don't know whether that's a false rating, you know? It's, it's a bit of an odd one. I'll go show you my rating on my base. I'll hit up a save. Got another 19 minutes for that. We might even get to do the next stage of the build during this episode. And here you go. Here's mine. So, oh, for fudge's sake, it's gone back to a B. What the fudge? It was an S earlier. Okay, well, that's still a problem. That's still a, that's still a bit of a shitter, isn't it? Okay. 
Fine. We'll come back and look at that later. It'll probably go back to being an S soon. Righto. Oh, we've got my ammo in the house. I was talking about my ammo earlier when we went to my P PvP base. My ammo is an awesome content creator. There's a lot of sort of indie sort of games. And also No Man's Sky. Great, great content creator. South African accent. Awesome accent. Lovely personality. If you haven't checked out my ammo, please check out my ammo. She's awesome. A Ballista Cola in the house as well. Ballista Cola, a UK guy. Very chilled, laid back voice. Almost like watching AMSR in No Man's Sky. If you want a very chilled, relaxing, tonal voice, check out Ballista Cola. Um, yeah, awesome. Nicolio, just got to run. Hi, Cola. Yeah, nice one. Welcome, Ballista Cola. I don't think I've got a quick link for you, Mr. Ballista Cola. I shut up the quick links. Um, uh, maybe Warfy might have made one. I don't know. He may have done. Sweet, but welcome. Welcome, Cola. Coolio. Smart Fox 2 Gaming. Well, hello, hello, hello. Well, hello there, Smart Fox 2 Gaming. It looks like we've still got the Nexus shake. That's been a bit of a weird one for ages. Some people say it's because there's a living ship inside of the Nexus. Well, I don't think there's a living ship here right now. So I don't think... Oh, there is a living ship there. It's over there. Maybe that is the cause. Who knows? But I've, I've seen the screen shake and there hasn't been one inside the Nexus. So I don't know whether that theory is correct or whether I just didn't see it. Maybe it had a hula spawned on top of it or something. Odd one. Yeah, strange that you get the Nexus shake. Okay, well, let's go to another base. Let's hit up a base. Okay, so here we go. Your base is... We've done that one. We're on to this one. NMSA... Scorpion, Scorpion Portal PvP modules. Okay. So, I think I built this here because in the station there's a vendor that sells some awesome S-Class PvP modules. And I think I just put down one of my Scorpion robotic builds here. Which, wouldn't it be cool to build one of those out of all the new parts? Oh, it would be, wouldn't it? Yes. Oh, a scorpion with the new parts. I might have to come back here and rebuild this base. So what I might do is just go and check in the station and see if those PvP modules are still there. And if they are, this would be a future video. I'd have to come back and rebuild the base. Holy fudge, what the fudge is going on here? There's all sorts of shite in my base. Okay, let's go out one of the claws. Let's see what's going on first. Okay, so it's on a lava world, and look, its arse end is actually in a rock face now. Oh, that wasn't like that before, trust me, chums, I wouldn't have built it like that, no. But yeah, that's my scorpion base, and I can build them better than this now. So I can build this one back better, that's going to be a build back better episode. But let's just go and check to see if the actual station vendor is still selling those S-Class modules. If he is, I give you the actual location code so you can come here and build one, well, and grab them yourself, because it's an awesome... He's got everything, pretty much. Geology Cannon is one of my favourite weapons. Scatter Blaster is another one of my favourite weapons. And for PvP, I like the Blaze Javelin. So let's see if he's got those three items in there. Hopefully he has, because that's how I like to build out my PvP um, multi-tools, to have those three in there. If I can, I do like the personal fills field, but that, you know, he's not going to be selling that. Cool! Let's have a quick look. It's always baffled me why the trade terminal is not in the Nexus. Yeah, that, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. And also, a um, food processor, nutrient processor up by Kronos. Sorely missed as well. Sometimes you've got ingredients on you and you could actually make a few more nanites, but instead you've got to fly out, go to your freighter or go to a base and go back to see Kronos. But I would like more to do with food. I would like more vendors that actually interact with you and ask you for food products or something. Or some sort of missions, maybe from your actual settlements, you know, chefs or something. Or like I was saying earlier, inside of that little mini bar I've got, maybe you could sell all your food wares there. Cooking is greatly underutilised, but it's got so much functionality to it. There's so much they could do with the cooking. Mm. There's so many bits inside of No Man's Sky where it feels that they've slipped in some really nice ideas, but they've left them in foundation level. A little bit like Station Cores and the Living Ship, not having hardly any tech. And there's, there, the list goes on. Um, which I'd like to, In fact, I've made a graphic of loose ends that I'd like to see tidied up. Maybe I need to make a video on that. Right, okay, let's go. Oh, no, not, not that. I don't want that console. Up of there. I want to talk to the little get guy. Yep, let's go and have a look, see. Hello, little get dude. Hello there, matey. 
Yes, I would like to see your modules. Let's have a look under the counter. That's where the good stuff is. Blaze Javelin, yeah. Pulse Plasma Launcher, not so much into that one. Geology Cannon! And we've also got the Pulse Splitter and the Scatter Blaster. So yeah, awesome modules for PvP. Great PvP area. I'm going to rebuild that Scorpion. But like I said, people, here's the coordinates in the bottom of the screen. If you want to come here to upgrade your multi-tool, this is a good place to do it. It's a shame that the multi-tool in the cabinet isn't slightly better, isn't it? Because that's a bit of a shite one. But there we go. There's the actual coordinates. I'm going to come back and I'm going to build back better that Scorpion. Let's have a look at that. Oh my god. We don't want to look at that. That just blew my eyes out of their sockets. That was terrible. Can I still use a return to Nexus? No, I can't. We're going to have to fly on out and look at another base. Sweet. Where's my ship? Let me to my ship. Awesome area for PvP modules, that, people. Cool. I have cooked at least 30 different things for no reason. Exactly that, Adam Mac. There does need to be a little bit more of that. Even Sassy Babe saying that No Man's Sky Restaurant Simulator. Well, they have gone and stuck the Sims straight into freaking No Man's Sky now with the settlements, so why the fudge not? Add some freaking cantinas in there and add the ability to sell food. Or they could give you missions to say, can you please craft me, you know, 50 horrific cakes or something, and you have to bake them, take them back or something, and then they give you a shedload of maybe even Quicksilver. Ooh, sneak. That'd be nice. Rune Saber, I hear they've, they've patched increasing living ship slots with freighters. They have. They've broken that relationship with the bulkhead. Yeah, you can no longer use the bulkhead actual exploit. Which made me think, because they did that, I think, just before Frontiers actually dropped. So that was what was making me think. The Void is definitely on the cards and we're definitely going to be using the living ship. And the living ship's going to get its upgrades at last. That was another sort of little thing for me that I was like, okay, it's going to happen. Night Tracer. Night, Night Tracer. Night Tracer's in the house, people. Hello there, Night Tracer. I just like his name. I like singing his name. It's just a thing that I do. Yeah, hello there, Night Tracer. Salute Mondo. Truck Central. Hello, Captain. I'm new around here. I haven't seen your avatar before, Truck Central. I hope you like what I'm doing, and I hope you have hit that subscribe button, Hercules. And we've also got Eugenio Hertz. Tell Hello Games to start a Kickstarter campaign if you want subnautical development other than that. Hmm, I don't really want it to go to subnautical type level. However, I do like the idea of scanning things that you see at bases or settlements, and it gives you base parts that you have not got. That would be quite cool. Glass Factory we've done, Dream Home we've done, we've done this, we've done that. Well, we're nearly at the bottom of the list now, people. So that's the one we just went to, Lava Worm Duck. I remember this. This base is terrible. I built it here because it was the first planet I saw that had giant worms. However, after Origins, those worms disappeared from this planet. So this this base here now longer, no longer serves a purpose. This one can get deleted. So I think we're nearly good with the amount of bases I've deleted now. They fixed one of the three ways to increase the living ship infantry space. I only know of that one way. If there's other ways, I don't know how to do them, uh, Mr. Bear. So, yeah, I only know... Oh, actually, I also know the uh, god tier ship way, but I've never put that out there in the verse because I've seen it go horribly wrong if you miss a step. So I don't really want to teach people god tier ship ways. I mean, I get asked the most basic of questions sometimes, so putting that out there... I think would cause more harm than good. I'll be forever answering people's questions. Captain Steve, I've gone and fudged up my ship and it's your fault. I don't want that. No. I heck no, I don't. Where's this base computer? Where the fudge is my base computer? I want to delete this base. But I first I need to find the base computer. And I can't see the base computer. Where are you, base... Oh, it's under the freaking water. Okay, so I made this one look a little bit like a shite duck. Let me go into camera mode. I'll show you my shite duck base before it disappears into the ether. So it's got the wings at the back there where my actual ship is parked. And then round here it's got kind of a duck face. Or it did have. Um, it doesn't look very duck-like anymore. I don't know what's happened to its bill. It had another landing pad in the front there for a, for a beak. That's gone. Okay, well, okay, fine. Well, this base can go as well. I'm not really keen on keeping it. Sweet. The living ship is good for black holes. Anything else? It's not even good for black holes. I don't even think the tech even... Actually, no, the tech doesn't break, does it, on them? So that's about the only thing. But what are black holes good for now? Black holes have got no real rhyme or reason now, have they? I mean, they did have the whole black hole exchange thing, where they actually told you the beginning and end points. 
But what's the point in using a black hole now if you can just hit up a portal and there's no portal interference? You don't really need the black holes to go anywhere. You can just portal everywhere now. So, yeah. Uh, well, maybe I'm wrong. People, maybe st people still like going through black holes, but I just don't see the point anymore. Ship summon exploit, exploit is by far the easiest way to increase the living ship um, inventory size. Okay. I'm not too sh is that is that the same as the god tier one where you spawn one ship on top of the other and it replaces the skin or something because that one I don't really count that because although you may have increased the infantry slot size you can't put in the living ship tech anymore it's no longer really technically a living ship it's just a normal ship with a living ship skin in a roundabout way if that's what I'm thinking I, I think I know the one that you're on about Okay, floaty ship. Let's make another save now that I've deleted a couple more bases. Let's go do that quickly. I wonder how much time has passed at my actual settlement. Before I end off, I jump back to my settlement and see if we can progress that building a little bit further. How so, Dr. Pong? What's Dr. Pong say? Living ship is good, not galaxy hopping. Yeah, it's... Well, its warp range is actually quite good, to be fair. But your freighter is still better. So the freighter is still probably the best way of jump jumping systems if you want to travel far. Black holes are now for going to random corners of the galaxy. It's like pressing the shuffle button on a music playlist. You never know where you end up. This is true. Yeah, they've still got that going for them. However, you can just go to a portal and just put in a load of random freaking codes. Same thing. No broken technology. Yeah, so yeah, there is that. Okay, here we go. Let's hit up this. Coolio. My bases. And what else have we got left? Left. Scorpion PvP. We're going to rebuild that one. Viking Anvil Hub Archive. Okay, so I built this when I was doing the Anvil Meetup. Um, it's not a very attractive base. It's one that I could build back better. We've got the NMSA Pearl Portal Nav Turtle. So this is again... Actually, let's have a look what this one is. Oh, I know this one. This is quite cool. You know my mech turtle that I built? This is like the pre -net, the pre frontiers version of that turtle. Um, it hasn't got a mech launcher inside of its, its rear end, but the planet that this is on is freaking awesome. The planet here is beautiful. It's great for flying your ship through caves. It's actually an awesome, awesome planet. So I'll jump here. I'll give you guys the portal code just in case you want to jump over and build something yourselves. It's a beautiful, beautiful purple planet. Uh, Mr. K. Hello, old chap. Just want to make fun of British people. Love the way you speak. Hello, governor. Yo, chap, twat. <laughs> ah, you got me. I nearly read that word. Yes, you get. Okay, well, yep. Yeah. We are that. We are um, crazy Brits here. Well, I am at least. I can't get out of my turtle. You're having a laugh. Where's my freaking doors gone? There should be ladders here. I should be able to... No. Where... What the fudge? I'm stuck in my turtle's head. Well, that's a shitter. Look, there's a downstairs, but I can't go downstairs because the downstairs... There's ladders supposed to be there. All right, we'll put the ladder back in. Let's see if we can get that ladder back. It's not snapping in. It's lost its snap point. Okay, oh, I'm going to have to climb out the top of its head and go round to its rear end. Well, that sucks. Okay, well, it looks like you can't have ladders going down anymore. So some of these old parts, although they're quite cool, they're, still, they're a little bit broken. So let's go into camera mode. Let me um, put the sun in the sky. Show you how awesome this planet is. The planet is awesome. And this is, this is the pre-sort pre, the pre sort of frontiers version of that turtle that I made. It's not as cool, is it? It really isn't as cool. Well, this is the only base that I've got on this planet at the moment, chums. So I might leave it here and I might come back and build this back better and uh, make it an actual new version of this turtle. Because it, although it's cool, there's broken elements. Like, I can't get into its head end anymore. And look, even the door over there has disappeared as well. So yeah, I might come back here and rebuild this. So, cool. Well, we've visited anyway. I was going to give you the portal code, wasn't I? Here we go. Portal code. On the screen there in the bottom left hand corner if you do want to come here and build because it is an awesome planet like i say you can actually fly through caves and things now you know inside expedition 3 they gave us that low flight mission i hope they put those up in the actual uh, station 
or even at a settlement, like one of the settlers asking to do it just to show off as the new overseer or something. That would be quite cool to wow your actual populace, wouldn't it? To actually fly past. Maybe they're doing a gala. It's like having the red arrows fly over or something. That would be quite cool to actually do that mission a little bit more often. I actually enjoyed that in Expedition 3, and I'd like to see that actually brought into the verse with other mechanics, perhaps. Okay, let's jump back. That would be cool. And we got Jawalki 2K, the last take a vote, XD. What the fudge? I have no idea. I've missed something. NMSA escape room. Uh, yeah, I could make an NMSA escape room. However, I don't really like puzzle rooms myself. I don't make maze bases, so nah, I don't know. So what, from what I gather, I get the two glyphs, and I can use them to portal to spots to get the rest of the glyphs. Um, yeah, that I did do, and Zane, I think Zane made a planet that had a load of glyphs on, well, a load of uh, travellers' graves on, and I think I did one ages ago as well, but I think things changed after Origins, stuff moved. So, yeah, an odd one, that one. I have got one where you can go and pick up a load of caches, in fact, I think that was the cache drop, droid drop-off, in the fact, um, for getting all your multi-tool uh, bits and bobs. What else have we got? Damash Hub. Oh, okay. There's still quite a lot to go, people. So, PvP Hub. Animus Archive. Hub Portal Nav Turtle. That's the one we just went to. Jason's R2-D2. So, that's on Jason's world. And I made him an R2-D2 there. And I put some little mini droids in his one. That's a really cool one. I'll leave that there. Sentinel Hunting Ground. Damash Hub. Sentinel Hunting Ground. Okay, so I've got two bases there. I've got the Yoda Turtle Pond, which is really cool, and this one, which isn't so cool, but they're right next to each other. So we go here, and I'm going to delete this one, and I'm going to leave my Turtle Pond there, because the Turtle Pond's really cute, but I'll show you both quickly. And this planet is insane. Uh, this planet I love to bits. It's deadly. Um, yeah. The Turtle needs an upgraded for interior lighting as well. It's very dark. It does. You're quite right. Yeah, I'm going to give it a complete facelift. You know, like my mech one that I built on the Expedition Free planet? I'd, I'd do something similar there, I think. That'd be cool. That's easy when flying over water. Or I might even build something completely different. Since I've got that mech turtle now, maybe I should build back something different there. Oh, my days. Okay, well, that portal is floating in the air. The, all the terminals are all over the freaking shop as well. I don't know where the base computer's going to be. Oh my, I can't even get out the freaking door. Okay, this is not good. Alright, can I get out the other door? Let's get out of this one. Okay, I can get out of this door just... Right, where's my base computer? This one's going. Because it's all moved all over the place. That's gone proper squiffy. We'll delete this base, and I will show you the turtle base on the same planet. Delete base. Now, I like this planet because it's deadly as. It's got evil sentinels on it, and it's got evil weather but you can take the most fantastical photos on this picture, on, the, on this planet. It's beautiful. So, yeah, very cool planet for photography. Let's just go into photo, photo mode. You get these angry skies full of lightning normally as well. And different times of the day, some of the visual effects, I mean, look at that red hue that we're getting already and rainbows and stuff. It's just magical for photos. You can, And it's bioluminescent and it's got a swamp as well. Right, where's my other base? Uh, you, I think the other base, I just jump over the side of here. And it's just down here, I think. I think it's jumping distance. We'll have a look. Weird landscape. There it is, down there. There we go. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Pong says, plus K plus dupe, tainted metal, and refining to nanites. Yeah, that's a very good way to get yourself nanites, is refining the, um, the tainted metal. Tainted metal, you're going to have to maybe run a couple of derelict freighters to get a batch. But yeah, then you can dupe it if you really want to, if you're into that. And then you can get a shed load of nanites fairly quickly. If you want other methods to get nanites really quickly, there are others. Um, Professor Cynical is your best bet. Hit him up. He's got loads of dupe methods for nanites. He's got some crazy ones that you can do without even having to leave the Nexus. Um, so yeah, check him out. Mannequin X. Hey, Captain. It's good to see you. Good to see you as well, Mannequin. Your avatar always creeps the freaking fudge out of me, though. Um, it's, yeah, pretty cool, though. Right, I just bounced off of that, didn't I? Okay, well, this is mental. The um, hazard protection here. You can see how quickly it's going down. Let's just top that back up again. Right, so this is my other base, just over here, over yonder hill. And uh, I will show you it. I mean, the structures here are simple, 
but I think effective. So let's head on over. So I've got my little Yoda hut. And to go with it, I've got these little adorable turtles. So let's go into camera mode. And these things are freaking easy to build. I've done like some build videos on how I put these together. If you like these little turtles, they are freaking simple. Couple of minutes, you can have one of these little turtle biodomes. And what I like is they lift them above the ground slightly. So none of the actual undergrowth and things actually ingress into the base. So yeah, I'm keeping this one here in the Damash hub. Damash Smash is a great content creator as well. And he does a little on um, No Man's Sky with VR mode on and stuff. So if you ever want to see VR, No Man's Sky, he's your man. I mean, look at this for photos. Look how cool that is. It looks like Dago Bar, doesn't it? Freaking mentals. Yep, and play with the sun a bit. You're going to... Oh, look at those bird bat type things as well with the freaking awesome wings. Great planet for that. So if you do want to come here, you're going to need hazard protection because it's freaking dangerous but there you go there's the uh, code in the bottom left hand corner Wolfie's just dropped the link for Damash's channel check out Damash he does some awesome stuff greatly underrated content creator should have far more subs than what he's got I have no idea why he hasn't um, he's got an awesome personality as well it makes me chuckle anyhow so yeah I, I really like Damash if you can't tell he's an awesome person and also content creator righto let's uh, jump back to the old Nexus let's uh, hit up another base nice one Mind that first step. It's a doozy. <laughs> it's a bit high. Yeah. Dr. K. Long I've never seen tainted metal yet. I'm super new, but I've noted your tip, and I'm excited to get to that point. Well, once you're in the actual nexus here, if you go up and see good old Tree Face just up here, he may give you a signal thing that you can use to call in a derelict freighter. Once you run the derelict freighter, you're going to have tainted metal. It's that simple. So come and talk to old Tree Face, and eventually, depends how far into the actual game you are, he will he will come up and he will say, "Do you want to invest?" Ask about derelict freighters. When you get that option, he's going to give you a little three signal booster. You use that. That calls in the actual um, derelict freighter, and then you're going to get your tainted metal. Yeah, good old Tree Face, Helios. Helios in Greek mythology was one of the sun gods, I believe. There's a, there's a couple of sun gods, but Helios was one of the main ones. He actually rode on a chariot of fire through the sky and stuff. Freaking mental loony in freaking Greek mythology. Um, Hyperion, I think he's another god of the sun as well or something, or Hyperion cube. I can't remember which, but he's, he's also badass in freaking Greek mythology. In fact, so is Ares, the god of war. Over here, he's got like a freaking bubble head and he, do, he does not look like a god of war mercury over here also known as hermes in greek mythology he's he's pretty darn kick-ass in um, greek mythology but yeah there's so much greek mythology in here which also made me think that the abyss would be like the void or chaos the realm of chaos in greek mythology also known as the abyss so uh, yeah so there's so much greek mythology in here even the atlas you know that's that's the, the, the titan he, he was the atlas actually held the the earth up he was a titan in greek mythology loads of greek mythology oh hello there damash welcome we were just talking about you we just dropped a link to your channel and said how awesome you were hello there damash welcome aboard yeah we just <laughs> we just picked up your channel just talking about you sir and then you appeared it's always a way isn't it it's a bit odd that damash yoda hut so i just went to your uh, damash hub i went to my old yoda turtle pond still there NMSA Droid Nanite Farm. Ah, this was an idea. This was an idea that I thought was a good idea that turned out not to be such a good idea. Basically, I was, ho I was asking people to come and build little mini droid farms here. And the idea is you walk around the farms, collect all your nanites by Chewy Wise, because there's droids all over this planet, and um, as you go, you just replenish the actual feeders for the next person. The only thing is, if you're not there, the creatures don't spawn in. So those feeders are never full. So you have to go there and sit around and wait. So it kind of destroys the whole purpose of the freaking farm. I really hope that Hello Games do something with a time mechanic. So if you do come back to these feeders on these farms, they're going to be, well, these harvesters, these things, they're going to be full of stuff, you know, because they've been running in the background and people are replenishing these things with automated foods in there or they would normally I haven't got nothing I can put in there but this is a droid planet and there's loads of droid bases just like this one all over this planet and feeding these guys I mean there's one just over there there's another one no that's my one isn't it I don't know 
there was lots of bases on here. That's another one of mine over there. Hmm, okay. Well, maybe it's not as utilised as it once was. But yeah, to be fair, it is kind of pointless. It's a little bit redundant. But I do like this base, well, this, this planet. So I'll probably keep the base here. We go back up to the Nexus anyway. Here we go. No, you can't. What's that? Bajichi Bodjotum. Yeah. Playing on Xbox. I've had the same thing. It even crashed when we got with my ship. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. If you're still experiencing crashes, if you're still experiencing crashes after this latest patch, 3.66, I would say send them over to the actual um, Zendesk and get them looked at. Right, oh, well, I think I've gone through quite a fair few bases and I've earmarked a couple to be built back better. So I will be doing episodes of um, bases before and after. So before the build off and then after the build. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'm going to build back better a load of bases. I've already got one in the wings that's going to be going live soon. If you remember, you're already, you can already see it. It's my frost farm. So yeah, and people, I'm going to end off now. So thank you very much for joining me, as always. And if I didn't get round to reading your message, sorry about that. Can you para from your settlement? No, no you can't. And I did try building a base near to my settlements because I saw other people do it on PC. And I thought I'd try it on PS5. When my base got to a certain size, bits of my settlement started to vanish. And then my settlement went underground by about two foot, so I couldn't go in any of the doors. So I deleted the base, reverted my save. My advice, don't bother building anything too big near to your settlement. If you're going to build something near to your settlement, keep it titchy tiny. Yeah, but then again, you don't need to now. You don't need to now because, you know, they've added in the actual teleporters now and they've added in a Galactic Trade Terminal and vendors if you've got marketplaces. So go check out your base. Oh, I was going to jump back to my uh, settlement, wasn't I? And see if I can progress that build quickly. So I might just do that before I go anyway. I just missed it. Well, not a problem, Damash. Yes, you're quite welcome. You're quite welcome. So I'm going to head back down. I'm going to start that um, other bit building and then I'm probably going to end off then. Um, because, yes, I've got like another 20 minutes to wait so I might as well go chuck a jacket potato in the oven or something right your bases let's go there Chicka boom let's go and have a quick look say I love this honey planet it's awesome yeah that makes no sense plenty of wiring everywhere even a portal and you can't get power from it well if you're not going to build a base near it it doesn't really make too much sense to need to draw power from it I really wish though in these base parts they added in new things to actually gain power from maybe these extreme storms like you see all this lightning coming down it'd be nice to have a lightning rod or when you get the typhoons it'd be nice to have some sort of wind generators you know so yeah there's things they could do I suppose yeah oh god captain don't listen to Rod's base ideas what base ideas has he given us? I have an idea about your base rebuilding. Do you, Mr. Rod? Rod is actually a fantastic base builder. And I'm all ears, Mr. Rod. If you want to come and assist me with some of these build back betters, you're more than welcome to. I would greatly appreciate it, actually, in fact. Because we could do maybe a semi-glitched build. You could come and teach me a couple of your glitchy type ways and I could actually pick up on them. Righto, let's go and have a look at the actual build over here then. Looks like it's actually got a marker still. That's unusual. Maybe that's a new fix. Hopefully that's a new fix, because that helps. Righto. So here we go. Three metal platings. Done, diddly. Another 20 minutes to wait. Cool. I haven't seen any of those green ships land for a while, chums. I want to see whether they actually do spawn a vendor now, because for me they weren't earlier. So yeah, all good. So let's just hit up a save. And uh, yeah, let's head on into my little quarters over here. And I will show you that they now have a teleporter. There we go. Got a teleporter in here now. I didn't build that. That's new with patch 3.66. And also your markets will have vendors if you've got markets on your um, settlement. Wind farm and lightning collectors. Brilliant idea. Well, thank you, Bud Green. Um, I did do a little video on um, new power base building ideas. I've done loads of ideas things. Why is your base on this planet, Stevie? Um... Why is my settlement on this planet? One, because I thought it looked a little bit like Tatooine. And also, this planet is actually a honey planet. So you see these over here? These little structures, although it's, a, it's like a cactus planet, when I shoot these, you watch what I get. I get sweet scented honey or something weird like that. Let's blast this. Die! Let's go to mining beam. Might be a bit quicker, mine it? Oh, what? What the fudge? Well, I'm not getting the secondary element. I've scanned all these. Oh, for fudge's sake. Die! 
Okay. Blow up. Okay, let's let's find another one to blow up then. Oh, I've annoyed a sentinel drone now. Trust me, you get freaking honey from the blasted planet. Okay, let's go up here. Let's try this one. Let's try this one. Die! Oh, it's given carbon. No, it gives a secondary element. Watch in the top right corner. Sticky honey! There we go. So I can just fly over this planet and shoot the heck out of it, get a load of sticky honey, give it to Kronos, get a load of nanites. It's freaking awesome. It's just a nanite rich type planet. Just fly over it and shoot the hell out of it in your ship. Fill your ship full of sticky honey, spend the day talking to Kronos, get a load of nanites. That's why my settlement is on this planet. And also, I think this planet looks freaking awesome when it's got a town on it. I mean, look at that. I didn't even change the sun's position. It looks great already. It's just awesome. I think it looks like Tatooine. I think it looks just like sort of sci-fi book covers. And that's why I've got my settlement on this planet. Um, I guess everybody is different. I love it. I love this. It's like the Wild West as well. So it just looks really cool. It just looks really in keeping. I love it. Die, sentinel little guy. Boom. Yeah, you can't kill them. Righto, there we go. Now I am going to be um, uh, logging off. Cool. All right, people. Well, not me sideways. Genius. Well, thank you, Capybara. Righto, there we go. I'm going to end off now, people. So you guys in the viewer world, thank you for watching. And um, I will see you later. So there we go. Jerry Bynes. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Call it must nicely. And uh, no, no, if I was going to... I, I just called it Sentinel. No, I didn't. I called it Honey Planet or something. I don't know what's going on there. It, he, I didn't call it Dimmel. It's because the Discovery servers are offline. It's called Honey Planet or something like that. Or Honey Maker. I think I called it Honey Maker. Yeah, bit of an odd one. But yeah, really cool. Somebody else has actually built here as well. If you do want to come here, you can. I don't want it to get overly congested. So in the bottom left-hand corner is my actual portal coordinates. Please don't build anywhere near to my settlement if you do come here. Because I don't want it to go all squiffy. Okay? So yeah, that's just one remit. Just don't build anywhere near my settlements. Okay? Just keep it well away. And from the other settlements on this planet. Just build somewhere else. Cool. That's the only caveat if you do want to come here. But there we go. There we are. Done, dilly, done. And goodbye. Cheery binds. Goodbye all. Bye-bye. So we go and uh, let's uh, end on off. So we go and broadcast. Thank you, people. Bye bye.